Hi, I'm Ryan Key. I play guitar and sing in Yellow Card. Great. So how's the tour going so far? Um, it's been awesome. Uh, you know, it's, I think the fact that we're doing these shows with Good Charlotte is just something really, really cool for fans of, of our genre of music, you know? And um, the shows have just all been so awesome and, like, happy and positive, and the fans are all having such a good time, and so are we. So that's all you can ask for, you know? That's incredible. Um, how did this particular lineup come to be? It's actually pretty interesting. We almost got in a huge fist fight with Good Charlotte in 2004 on the Warp Tour, and it was never really resolved, so we always just kind of had, like, a beef, <laughs> I guess. And, um, and I wasn't actually involved in it, which makes me really happy, because usually back then if there was something bad happening, I was involved in it. It was just a weird time for me. but. That particular instance, I was not. So uh, last year, when we started working on the new record, um, the old Twitter account, um, there was a post from Benji Madden that said, "I know we've had our differences in the past, but I'm really excited about the new Yellow Card record." And so we were all like, "Well, that's pretty huge of him to say." And so I reached out uh, to them. Their manager is actually the guy, one of the two guys who signed us to Capitol Records back days. He now manages uh, Good Charlotte. And so I reached out to them, reached out to him, and, and Benji and I swapped emails, and, and then we swapped phone numbers, and then we just started talking and kind of becoming friends, you know? And um, then we all, we both had this month nothing filled in yet, and I think, I think honestly, they, they were really like, let's do shows with Yellow Card, you know? And, um, and we were like, yeah, of course, let's do that. Sounds awesome. So just worked out and, and it's been great. I mean, they're and they're awesome dudes and we've made new friends and that's that's the best part of touring. That's awesome. Thank God for Twitter then. Yeah, <laughs> right. I hate the internet, but sometimes sometimes it, it does good things. So, can you take us through a typical day on tour? Yeah, well, like I was telling you before the interview started, I don't sleep very well on the bus, so you might think I'm a bum because I don't wake up until like one o'clock in the <laughs> afternoon every day. But it's really because I don't go to sleep until like 8 a.m. when we stop moving. Um, usually, I try not to take any drugs or medicine to make me sleep. Um, so I just, you know, just don't sleep very well. So I get up, scrounge for some food, shower, gotta have a shower. Even if I'm gonna work out or something, I have to shower first because it just wakes me up and gets the day started. And then do interviews for a couple hours, sound check for an hour or so. And then the worst part of the day is when we just sit and wait for like six hours to play. The best thing about the all-time low tour that we just did is we were direct support for them and we played at like eight o'clock every night. It was brilliant <laughs> because by the time soundcheck was over at you know four or five, we got some dinner, warmed up, and got dressed. It was like seven thirty, and we were on stage. And now it's like ten o'clock again, so it just takes forever. Um, you know, but then you get out there and 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 you rock, and it's like. No matter what happens in your day on tour, if, if you get a bad phone call from home or if, if you don't feel well or, you know, the show seems to always kind of fix that problem, um, whatever the problem may be, and, and or at least it does now. We're just a really, really good band right now. Not, not like in an ego maniacal way, like we are good people, we're happy, and uh, we're a good version of a band right now. And so I think the shows have really been helping us all stay positive because they've all been so good. Um, but yeah, it's you know it's a pretty routine day. Every day is it's pretty it's Groundhog Day. It's, it's the same thing over and over again. Do you ever get downtime? What do you do to pass the time? Uh, we play a lot of soccer. We try and find a place. Sometimes we'll just we carry goals with us in the bus actually, and <laughs> we try and if the venue's big enough, we'll set up in the venue and play. And anytime we can find grass or, or a good field to play on, we we go out and play. But um, we watch a lot of sports and 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 play a lot of soccer. Sounds like a pretty good day. Yeah, keep us in shape, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, so, we're in Baltimore, and that's like a hometown for Good Charlotte. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of a hometown show, I guess. And I think you guys have a hometown show coming up soon. Yeah. How would... Do you notice a difference when it's a hometown show versus, like, a different... Um, yeah. I, you know, it's... Uh, we haven't... We actually have a, a challenge in our hometown right now because we haven't been able to play there in, like, five years. And... Of course, fans think it's because we just don't want to go to our hometown, and they take it personally. And because we moved to California, you know, ten or eleven years ago, and 
so, you know, people feel disowned and whatever, and it's just, you know, I've never not stood behind the fact that I and we are from Jacksonville, Florida. I've never, I, don't, I don't understand where that sentiment comes from, that we think we're a California band, because we never say that. Right. Um, and so, but there, it's, it's just been totally circumstantial, whether, you know, the, the Lights and Sounds touring got cut short because of my surgery on my vocal cords, and then Paper Walls, we, did, we were on someone else's tour. We played, actually sort of in Jacksonville on the Warp Tour that year in 2007, but then we only did one fall tour and we were opening for another band and their tour didn't go to Jacksonville, not our fault. And then the acoustic tour uh, that we did in the spring of 2008, um, I, I believe the circumstance was the venue that we would play in, in our hometown just wasn't going to work, like schedule-wise. There was no uh, nowhere to play, basically, because it was you know the rooms were booked, right. so we couldn't play there then either. And then we went on hiatus, and we just haven't been there. So our hometown fans are pissed, I think, and it sucks because um, you know my whole family's there. I love it there, um, and it's it's funny because this, their hometown show is sold out, and ours is the same size room, and I think we've sold like 300 tickets. Oh and my it's gosh! Just, yeah, it's it's a little bit frustrating. So and you know it's it's not it. The other thing that's frustrating about it is that's not descriptive of what's happening with the band right now either. Like, all these shows have been great. They're not all selling out, but they're doing really well. And, uh, you know, I'm interested, I mean, maybe a bunch of people are going to walk up. Like, a lot of people do do that nowadays. Not as many people buy tickets in advance as they used to. Um, but, yes, there's definitely an issue in our hometown, oh. and it, it makes us sad because it's just been totally out of our hands, you know? Um, so we're just gonna go and, and even you know even if only 300 people came, we would still give it everything we had just to remind them that we're not you know just like skipping over our, our hometown when we tour. Right. Well, good luck with that. Uh -huh. Hopefully. <laughs> um, so, Baltimore. Have do you have any particularly memorable experiences here from the past times? You've I played? mean, the last the show that we played with All Time Low on the, on the spring tour was the best show of the tour, um, for sure. It was. It was insane. I mean, it was in that arena, so there was, you know, 4,500 people there. Right. And and all those shows were great, and there were definitely nights where we could really feel a, a presence of, of Yellow Card fans, and then there were nights where we couldn't as much, but we still had good shows. But something about the Baltimore show was just, I think it was also because it's their hometown show, so right. the energy was really high anyways. But we definitely were able to take advantage of that energy because the, the show was just crazy good. I mean, the whole floor was moving. It was, it was amazing. So... Um, you know, I think tonight's going to be pretty insane because of that. I mean, if there's any, it was only a month ago, so right. <laughs> hopefully some of that's still left over, you know? Yeah. So you guys went on a hiatus for two years mm -hmm. and came, returned last year, put out a record this March. What do you think? Thinking, say yes. Um, how was it to get back in the studio? Did old habits come back quickly? Um, no. One of the big things about doing this again was sitting down and talking with each other about old habits and how they led to not being in the band anymore, you know? And everyone was really, really open with each other and, and really honest about sort of what we needed from each other to go forward, you know? And we never really did that before. Everything got so crazy so fast for our band that we didn't have time to stop and work things out, you know? We just kept going, kept going, and eventually it just reached a boiling point where we weren't having fun anymore, and that's sort of why we took the break. But this whole process has been nothing but fun. I mean, the whole we spent the whole year. We all live in different cities now. Well, until last month, I just moved back to Los Angeles from Georgia, where I was living during the break. And uh, but at at the, that time, I lived in Georgia. Mackin was in Seattle. Mendez is in Arizona. LP was in LA, and Sean O'Donnell, our new bass player, is from San Diego. So we were all over the place. But we spent the year traveling around to we kind of hang out with each other and write and then coming together in Arizona at, at our studio at Ryan's house to, to demo stuff so it's been a long time since we've had that much time to write a record I mean usually we'll tour 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 you take a month off and then you have eight weeks in a room to come up with whatever the record's going to be but we had all year to do it and then we actually moved into an apartment in LA all together um, to, to do the record which is was awesome because we would go to rehearsal and then come home and like still be together so we could still work and still, you know, I don't know, it was just a really collective effort on the record and so I think it was it was a really new, good, fresh experience, you know. Good, different. Yeah. It was good. Um, and now having new music, being back on the road, how is it to get to interact with your fans like daily? Again? Yeah, it's great. I mean, 
I, I feel like I'm just getting back into the stride of, of doing the, the lead singer thing, you know, it takes a minute. Um, on, the, on most of the touring this year, the international stuff that we did, we were headlining at the beginning of it, but it was the first stuff we had done in, you know, three years, so that was definitely more about sort of ironing out playing and getting back to being a tight unit, playing our songs. And then opening for All Time Low, you kind of had to fly through the set because it was 40 minutes and we wanted to play mm -hmm. as many songs as we could. But now I kind of have the freedom to to interact with the fans again in between songs and think, you know have moments with them and tell some stories and, and really connect. And it's the last couple of shows, is, I feel like I've really begun to channel my inner Billy Joe again <laughs> and, and get back where I want to be. So it's awesome, you know, and the new songs are, are going really well. There's three or four songs off the record that get sort of the mo online seem to get the most reaction and we're playing three of them right now and and uh, and then one we're playing one like kind of that we picked off the record but but the ones that the fans love that we know they love online it's like playing it feels like we're already playing some huge single that was like some, you know what I mean even mm -hmm. though we're not gonna have a huge single on this record and, and that's a really awesome feeling that is yeah that's great um, so when you write songs if I write with some particular idea in mind has there been a standout to you where like there's just you're talking to someone and they completely like misconceive what you were thinking in the song well, not in a bad way necessarily mm -hmm. just like oh wow like I didn't know yeah you um actually I could, there's there's one on the new record that is probably the closest song to me on the record uh, it's called sing for me and I wrote it about <clears throat> my aunt Stephanie she is she was diagnosed with brain cancer last year and uh, we've always been a band that has had s songs that dealt with loss, whether it be actually losing a, a, a person in your life or a relationship, losing whether it be a friendship or, or a, a, I don't know, romantic relationship, whatever mm -hmm. you want to call it. Um, and how to deal with that, those feelings, you know, that's something that we've written a lot about, or I've written a lot about. And so anyways, I knew I wanted to write a song about this because it's really affecting my family in a pretty heavy way. And, um, but I ended up writing the song from the perspective of her singing sort of or, or, or talking to her son instead of writing it from me to her, which is really cool that it came out that way. But a lot of people ha have begun to use the song as a relationship song in, in sort of like an only one kind of way. And so when I tell them that actually it's about my family member who's terminally ill, people are kind of like, oh, I'm sorry, you know, and it's like, it's fine, it's fine, it's not, you know. I, it, you, a song is going to be what a song is going to be to you, but um, but that's definitely one that that unless I explain what it's about, it doesn't sound like you know I'm singing about necessarily someone who may not be right. with us anymore. You know. Right. Um. Ooh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> so you guys have some great videos, music videos, mm -hmm. especially the new one. I am like in love with this video. Cool. <laughs> um, but how does that work for you? How does like the brainstorming process for music videos go? Um, they've been different. All they've all been different. Um, you know, you get the, the traditional way is you get a stack of, of treatments, which are like basically like scripts that the directors write. The music video world is um, interesting in that there's not like a screenwriter and then a director. The director kind of does, he does all of it, sees the vision or whatever he thinks it should be, puts it in the words. You read it and you decide which one you like the best, basically. Um, and uh, there have been videos where. You know, I've been so hands-on that like I've had the freaking megaphone in my hand and, and you know been dragged back into wardrobe or whatever to stop directing myself. You know, um, but then there's other ones where it's just totally all smooth and, and you know I don't I kind of just kick back and let the director do his thing. And that was really the this the video for Hang You Up was um, we knew when we when we talked to Chris the director that he had the right idea in that you know we've never really done anything like like this video and also just that the song is pretty heavy hang you up you know it's a it's a lot about the song is a lot about the break away from the band and how much for me it was that was the first song I wrote after we took a break and I don't usually write very many of the songs like in their entirety by myself we, we write a lot together but that one I wrote most of it on my own um, and it was it's heavy you know it's about wanting so badly to be out of it and, and find happiness again but then missing it every mem every moment of your life, you know? And so he was like, we need to do something that doesn't take us too seriously. Like, we don't need to go out and make some, like, high drama 
thing to go along with this song. It, it might actually be kind of cool to poke fun at the idea of that a little bit. And we all thought that was great. And so um, we really just let him run with it. Awesome. Turned out amazing. Thanks. Yeah, it's, it's cool. It was, it's done really well. It was, um, it was like in the top three MTV.com most viewed videos for like over a month. It was really cool for us. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, and you have, you recently announced that you have a headlining tour mm -hmm. for the U.S. coming this fall. Yeah. Can you give us a sneak peek of what we can expect from that? Like, how's it going to compare to this one? Well, it's going to, the shows will be longer. Um, you know, we're going to, I'm not sure how much of the new record we're going to play. I mean, in Far Up Test, we just play the whole thing, but we're going to be playing some more new songs and, and uh, probably throw in some stuff that's, like, super ancient because <laughs> I know how much everybody loves it when we do that, so... Um, it's just, you know, it's going to be great. It's going to be just that it, it's not going to be any kind of bells or whistles that you, you know, it's just going to be a yellow card rock show. Um, and if you've ever been to one of those, then you'll be happy, you know. Awesome. Well, stepping away from music for a second, you have mentioned that you're a big soccer fan. Mm -hmm. um, how did that come to be your sport of choice? Um, it actually hasn't always been. I, I, play, I played soccer as a kid and, and up until I was 15. Um, in school, I played up until I was 15, and then I switched and went to arts high school, which is where I met Sean and the original guys from Yellow Card. Um, and so I had to stop playing because there were no sports at our, at our high school, at the art school. But um, in 2006, the, the World Cup, I kind of caught the bug, and then and then this past year, just I was fully addicted. I, and I, I had, you know, it, I feel like it's like finding a new band, kind of. Like, I've always loved the sport, but I just... If if it had worn off by now, it's been it's been a year since last since the cup last year. If it had worn off by now, I would be like, oh, it was just a phase. But I can't. I mean, I'm I am addicted. Like I can't. It's all things, everything. It's on TV all the time. I watch it every. You know. So and and playing again, we play a lot. Um, me and and Ryan Mendez and Sean Mackin were actually in a league in LA while we were making the record, and our team went to the final in the league, and so it's, it was rad. So um, we definitely love the game a lot. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. And our website is popculturemadness.com, mm -hmm. so we're all things pop culture. But I was reading your Twitter, and I did stumble across a tweet that said Horcruxes or Hallows. Mm -hmm. So I have to ask, are you a Harry Potter fan? I am, yeah. Books, movies, both? Uh, I, I did the movies. I haven't done the books. I, re I read um, Deathly Hallows, though, because I, wanna know what ha I wanted to know what happens. I couldn't wait any longer. Um, which is gnarly because it's like a 4,000 page book. <laughs> yeah. um, but I did read that. I didn't, read, I didn't read the originals. But I wanted to, I was really trying to wait until they were all on, on DVD to watch them all the way through. Um, but I just couldn't wait any longer. A couple years ago, I, I finally cracked and started watching them. But yeah, I just, I love, I mean, I love all nerdy stuff. Come on. <laughs> I have a stormtrooper tattooed on my arm. I'm a pretty big dork. Or really cool. Depends <laughs> well, <laughs> dorkiness can be cool, I guess. <laughs> So you're going to a midnight premiere of the show, the movie? Uh, yeah. I got. I don't know what the deal with buying tickets is going to be, but and I'm in Los Angeles, so it's going to be really hard, probably. But um, there's a theater, movie theater chain in. Uh, I don't know if they're in Northern California, but in LA, um, called ArcLight Cinemas, and it's just the best movie experience of your whole life. It's like there's no. You, when you go to the theater, it's seated, so you get to pick your seats out, and you have, you know you can you sit. They're numbered, and then. It's all, I mean, it's amazing, like, the, the quality of the theater is amazing, but there's no, like, um, commercials or video thing before the movie. You know, there's previews, but there's no, like, right. you don't have to sit through watching something about an ABC family show that's coming on <laughs> and what behind the scenes, like, I don't, you know, you just go, you sit down, and then, like, an usher actually comes out and, and explains, like, the film that you're seeing, the director, or the stars, and the, like, tells the whole thing, and then, oh, wow. yeah, it's, it's super cool, and, um, so I'm hoping that that's where I'm going to see it, because it's just, like, the best movie. That would be an awesome. Yeah, they have this, uh, one of the rooms in the Hollywood is called the Cinerama, yeah, Cinerama Dome, I think. It's this huge dome-shaped, like, room with a giant screen. It's awesome. <laughs> so that's probably where I'll be seeing Harry Potter. Excited. Yeah. So switching mediums, TV, are you watching anything good these days? I just watched the season two finale of Parenthood last night, and it wrecked my life. <laughs> I love that show so much. I mean, I love a lot of the actors on that show anyways. Big Craig T. Nelson fan. I love Peter Krause from Six Feet Under, which is probably my favorite film thing ever of all time was Six Feet Under. I love it. Watched all five seasons three times through. It's like, I just love it. But, um, but yeah, I love Parenthood right now. Really sad Friday Night Lights is over. 
that was one of my favorites. I'm definitely into sort of like, I'm not really into sitcoms, so I was never like a Seinfeld mm -hmm. type guy. Um, I like more kind of straight drama, whatever, but, um, but yeah, Parenthood is incredible. That would be the most recent show, I guess, that I've watched. Alright, cool. And to wrap things up, say, okay, if when you're through thinking Say Yes was the soundtrack to a movie, mm -hmm. what would the movie be like? Man. I, I mean, it would be some kind of story of, like, triumph and, like, overcoming the odds, you know? I don't know what exactly, but, like, a Karate Kid-style movie, you know? <laughs> the original Karate Kid. Um, I don't know, something like that, probably. Awesome. Yeah. So, do you have a final message to your fans and the visitors of PopCultureMadness.com? I mean, just spread the word that we're back out on the road and touring and, you know, have a record out. And a lot of, there, you'd be surprised if you go and say, hey, do you remember Yellow Card? People will be like, oh yeah, I remember that. Um, so, you know, that's how we did it the first time around, was just by our fans going out and kind of becoming an army for us. And uh, we're hoping that they're going to do the same thing for this record.